Well, it's um, it's interesting because Nero is a showman, and there is a way in which actually showmanship is at the heart of the uh, identity of uh, an emperor. You think about Augustus, who was clearly very good at these sorts of public relations. You think of somebody like Tiberius, very curmudgeonly uh, sort of person, uh, and he's not good at that degree of showmanship. Um, but it's almost as if here you've got um, Nero crossing boundaries and taking things simply to a new um, level. At um, 1533, for example, the first chapter of AD 64, um, we get a focus on um, Nero being uh, driven by a, a sharper um, desire um, day after day um, for um, performing um, on, on the stage. And it's one thing for an emperor to be um, sitting um, at a performance, um, a gladiatorial performance or whatever it might be, um, somehow um, overseeing the activities. It's quite another for an emperor to um, put himself onto the, the stage. I mean, this sort of uh, activity was traditionally associated with um, pretty um, uh, low-ranking people. Um, and uh, the degradation of the aristocracy, not just Nero, that, that comes out um, in, in this book is, is another thing to notice. It's, so it's not just Nero, but he's effectively um, having an, a negative impact on everyone around him because people, um, in a sense, uh, play his game in order to try and please him. Uh, and it's only going to get worse as the narrative continues.